The iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max have some of the best cameras on any smartphone. And I would go as far as saying they have the best cameras for video creation. And in this video, I wanna go over several accessories to help you get the most out of these cameras. But we're gonna do things a little bit different. Rather than talking about a bunch of expensive high-end accessories, well, I'm gonna talk about those things, but I'm also gonna give you some cheaper alternatives. That way, no matter what budget you're in, you should be able to find something that works for you. And we're also gonna be talking about a wide range of accessories for different applications. So this first accessory really doesn't have anything to do with the iPhone cameras per se. Instead, it's meant for someone that already owns a camera. And let's say you own an older Sony camera and it doesn't feature a flip out screen. Well, that's where something like this comes in. This is the Axoon Simo. It costs around 180 bucks. All of these links can be found in the description, by the way. And it basically turns your iPhone into a full fledged camera monitor. Let me show you how it works. So the Axum Simo is basically a smartphone clip and you open it up, you take your iPhone and you put it inside the clip. And there's a little button right here that as soon as you press against it, it closes. So it snaps around your iPhone. Up top, we have a cold shoe. And on the bottom, we have a quarter 20 with RE locking pins. And then along the side here, we have an on and off button. We have a video out USB-C port. And then on the other side, we have a five volt out USB-C port and then an HDMI import. And on the back, it's powered by a Sony NPF style battery. So I have my Sony a7S right here. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Axoon Simo and slide it into one of the cold shoes. So from here, I'll just take my Sony NPF battery and lock it into the back of the Axoon Simo. And then I'll take a USB-C to lightning cable, which Axoon does include inside the box. I'll take the USB-C part and plug it into the video out port on the Simo and then connect the lightning part into the iPhone. And then I'll take an HDMI cable and plug one end into the Axoon Simo, just like so, and then take the other end and plug it into my camera. The next step is to download the Axoon C app, which I've already downloaded it, it's right here. I'm gonna go ahead and launch it, and then I'm gonna turn on the Axoon Simo. So once the firmware has been updated and you have everything connected, turn on your camera and then just tap monitor, and there you go. You now have a live feed of whatever your camera is seeing. So there's my hand right there. And what's really cool is with the Axoon C app, you have all the professional controls you could possibly want. You do have your histogram, you have your waveforms, you have peaking, you have different settings for LUTs, zebras, audio settings, markers, you have false color, you have your audio levels, different crops. So if you want different aspect ratios, you could do that. You also have anamorphic de-squeeze, like a lot. And what's really cool is since this is a direct connection to your camera, you can actually save a recording by tapping on the record button here, and it will save a 1080p version of whatever it is you're recording. So that way, if you're doing something for social media, since TikTok and Instagram only support 1080p anyways, it's going to automatically be saved right on your phone so you can upload it. You can even use this for live streaming. Plus, if you get the larger NPF style batteries, you don't even have to bring a camera battery as long as you have USB-C power delivery on your camera since it does have that five volt out USB-C port which can power your camera. But you know, the Axum Simo is almost 200 bucks and it may not be affordable for some people out there, especially if you spent all of your money on a camera. The most affordable solution that I've found is just to use your OEM camera app. So if you have a Sony camera, download the Sony Play Memories app and you'll have a live view feed of whatever it is you're recording wirelessly to your phone and you can adjust some things like your aperture and your shutter speed and your ISO and you can also start and stop recording. Now it's not gonna be as reliable as the Axon Simo just because it's wireless and that connection could drop, but it will get the job done. There's also an app out there, I think it's like 10 bucks, it's called Field Monitor and it does the same thing as the Sony or Canon app, but it's a little bit more consistent with the wireless connectivity, so you might wanna look into that as well. But that's definitely the cheapest option that I have found when it comes to an alternative to the Axoon Simo. The next item that I wanna talk about is a smartphone gimbal. Now this is from Xiaomi. This is the Smooth 5S. It's one of the latest smartphone gimbals to be released so far, and I really like it. I guess the big question is, why do I recommend the Smooth 5S over something like the DJI Osmo Mobile 6? This gimbal here gives you an LED light bar right here built into the cradle on the gimbal. And this can be controlled with the button located right over here that I can touch with my thumb. So if I press and hold, it'll turn that light on. 
And then once on, I can use the scroll wheel back here to make that light brighter. And if that's not enough for you, Zhiyun introduced these magnetic points on the bottom of the cradle and on the top of the cradle. And I can take this little LED attachment right here that you can get in a bundle, snap it on, and look at that. Now I have another LED light that I can control with this scroll wheel. And I can attach a third one right up here on the top to give me three different lights. Inside the box, if you get the kit, you also get gels that you can put over the attachable light. That way you can make it a little bit colder, you can make it warmer, you can get like a really cool like RGB type effect. So there's a lot of really cool things that you get inside the box if you get the bundle, but that bundle is over 200 bucks. If you don't get the bundle, it's around 169, so a little bit more than the Osmo Mobile 6. But if you get this gimbal on sale, like it is right now, it's only like 144 or $145. So here's an example for you. Right now I'm inside of this little tunnel and the lighting obviously is pretty bad. And this is without a light. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the light. And right now it's on low, so I'm gonna go ahead and brighten it up. And that should make a big difference. You should be able to see me much better, giving me a more balanced exposure, especially because I'm also backlit. Now just remember, this is also without that third light. If I had the third one, it would be even brighter. This is gonna be great for concerts, for low lit events, or even nighttime video. Another reason why I really like the Smooth 5S is its build quality. So I love the rubberized grip on the backside, it just allows you to get a nice firm grip on the gimbal. Even like this textured area right here just feels really good when you're holding it. I love the control setup. On the left-hand side, you have this nice wheel that can be customized for either focus or zoom with a huge record button right in the center. It feels like a professional tool and that's what I really like about it. It also has great motors. So once you get your phone, you know, balanced to a certain degree, you can use the auto-tune feature inside of the Zhiyun app to smooth out anything that you might've missed or had problems with during the manual balancing process. Probably the most important reason why I would go with the Smooth 5S over the Osmo Mobile 6 is its tilting degree. So the Osmo Mobile 6 has a very limited degree of tilt. Like it stops like right maybe there. Whereas check this out on the Smooth 5S, I can go straight up and almost point it back at myself. Like, look at this. I'm looking at myself. And if I go down, I can literally go straight down. And the Osmo Mobile 6 is not giving you anywhere near the degree of tilt that this gimbal can offer. Smartphone gimbals are fantastic and I absolutely love them, but if you don't want all the bells and whistles that come with these gimbals like vortex mode or all these other trick shots and the templates that come with the apps or the LED bar, things like that, and you just want smooth footage, well, you don't have to buy a smartphone gimbal to do that. You could just get a smartphone clip, a nice cheap tabletop tripod and turn on action mode. Like, let me show you. So right here I have like a 10 or $15 tabletop tripod. It extends. It can also be mounted on a table since it does have the little tripod down here on the bottom. And this is a small rig smartphone clip. It has like a cold shoe, but also a quarter 20 on the bottom. I think this thing is like 10 bucks. So altogether, we're looking at like 20, maybe $25 tops. Okay, so right now I'm recording on the Smooth 5S gimbal. I'm in 4K 30 frames per second using the ultra wide on the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And I'll let you know why that's important here in just a minute. But as you see, the footage looks great. It's nice and stable. Now let's switch over to the cheap tabletop tripod and smartphone clip. So now I'm recording on my little makeshift gimbal, the tabletop tripod and smartphone clip. The reason why the resolution was important previously is because action mode only allows you to shoot in 2.8K versus 4K when I'm using the gimbal. So the resolution is higher using the gimbal, but for just stable footage, I think this looks pretty good. And just for SNGs, this is with action mode turned off, just using the regular stabilization on the iPhone because it's already so good. So now I'm shooting in 4K 30 frames per second, still using the ultra wide, so it should be really stable. And since I'm not doing anything crazy, it's probably gonna be just as good as action mode. Let me know what you guys think. Freewell makes a lot of really cool things for drones, cameras, and smartphones. And they recently dropped their Sherpa collection for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. And in that collection, there's like a really awesome iPhone case that has magnets built around the camera for attaching their proprietary filters. And you can also use their proprietary lenses, like anamorphic lenses and things like that. But we're not gonna focus on that. Instead, we're gonna focus on this, which is also part of the Sherpa collection, and it's their smartphone hand grip, and it's dope. 
So basically, this is like a smartphone clip on steroids. It's built incredibly well, being made mostly of metal with some high quality plastic. Up top, we have a cold shoe with three quarter 20s. And on the bottom, we have an Arca Swiss plate as well as three more quarter 20s. All you have to do is just open this up slightly like so. And then I can take my iPhone here and I'll go ahead and mount it in just like this. So it is spring loaded, slide it over to the side. And then I can take the back right here Close it up, slide it up, and now I have a nice grip on my phone for taking pictures or recording video. And what's really neat is there's a shutter button. So if I turn it on and then go into my iPhone, I can connect to my iPhone through Bluetooth. That way the grip is now working with my iPhone and I can launch my camera app. And if I hit the shutter button, you can see I just started recording. And then if I switch to photo, I can hit the shutter button and now I'm taking pictures. This just gives you a nice comfortable grip that's similar to a regular camera. And what's really cool is I can flip this down like so and then extend it. And now I have a selfie stick. I can even pivot this so I can flip it around and then tilt it down. I can also come back up and then go sideways and then put it in portrait. If I wanna take a portrait photo or portrait video, I can take the shutter button from the top here. And since this has magnets in it, I can attach it right here to give me easy control of the shutter. I mean, how cool is this thing? It's really, really cool. The only downside to this grip is the price. It's around 80 bucks, which is extremely expensive for something like this. So for a budget option, we're going back to my little $20 tabletop tripod and smartphone clip. I can just take my iPhone and mount it into the smartphone clip just like so and extend it just like on the Sherpa grip, like so, and I can tilt it, and this can even rotate. So now I'm in portrait. And if you're wondering about the Bluetooth connectivity and control, well, you can pick up like a $5 little Bluetooth button like this, connect it to your phone, and be able to trigger the shutter whenever you need to. And you can even mount it with some Velcro right here, just like on the Sherpa. And this entire set right here is no more than 30 bucks. The next thing that we need to talk about is audio. How can we get good mic quality out of the iPhone? And I have a couple solutions. So for the premium option, the expensive option, I recommend the DJI mic. I love this thing. I use it on my regular cameras like what you're seeing me on right now, as well as smartphones like the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the iPhone 14 Pro Max. If you go with the high-end kit, which is around 329 bucks, you get a nice carrying case where you can store the mics when you're not using them, and it also charges the mics. I mean, the battery life on this thing is incredible. Inside the kit, you get the receiver, which is pretty cool because you can detach the clips down here on the bottom and then swap them out for like a lightning clip. You have a USB-C, and then you have a cold shoe clip for attaching it to a regular camera. The mics themselves also have a record feature, so you can hit the record button on the side and then just straight up record into the mic and you don't even have to attach this to your phone and then you can sync the audio or if you're doing a voiceover this is perfect and you also get dead cats in the kit that go right on top of the mics here and this is going to prevent any wind noise so the mic is on and i'm going to hit record so now i'm recording using the dji mic and this is what the audio sounds like like i said it is kind of windy today but with the dead cat it's going to block out all that wind noise and give you a nice crystal clear sound and if you don't have the budget for the high-end kit for the dji mic they did just release a kit that includes one transmitter and one receiver and it's just over 200 bucks so on the budget side of things or for cheaper alternatives i have a couple the first of which is this mic right here this is the Rode SmartLav, and it's a lavalier mic designed for smartphone use, but it looks just like a regular lav. Unfortunately though, because this uses a 3.5 millimeter connector and the iPhone does not have one, you'll have to also get this right here, which is a lightning to 3.5. So you just take this, attach it, and then now you can plug the mic in. Now altogether, this is around like 90 bucks because the connector or the adapter is 10 bucks and then the mic itself is 80. So now I'm recording on the Rode SmartLav. I have it 
clip to my jacket right here and of course I'm recording on the iPhone 14 Pro Max and this is what the audio sounds like going directly into the camera. Now unfortunately I don't have a dead cat for this mic on me so I'm just using the foam windscreen so there might be some wind noise but overall the audio quality should sound pretty good. Now let's switch over to the cheapest option. For a truly budget option, you can go with something like this, which are the wired Apple earbuds. This one has a 3.5 mil connector on the bottom, so you'll also have to pick up the adapter. And like I said, the adapter is 10 bucks, and these wired earbuds are around 10 to 20 bucks because these are the older version, but you can pick up the lightning version that require no adapter for around 20 bucks. I'll link both in the description. So now I'm recording on the cheapest option, which are the wired Apple earbuds. I'm trying to pull like an inspector gadget here and uh, hide the mic from the wind, trying to do my best but um yeah that's probably the biggest downside with using this solution is you're gonna get wind noise but ultimately if you're just looking for a really cheap option this could be what you're looking for i mean it's it's a great alternative and the audio quality should be pretty good so now i'm recording audio on the internal mics on the iphone 14 pro max and don't get me wrong these mics are great but the biggest downside to this is going to be wind noise like you could definitely hear wind noise just because it's picking up audio from all around so we've talked a lot about supports and tripods and things like that but i want to go over one more and this is the mantis pod pro now this thing is quite expensive the one that i have here comes with the included ball head and it's around like 150 bucks so definitely on the pricier side for a little handheld tripod but it's extremely versatile and that's what makes this so special so first and foremost if I open this up like so I have a smartphone clip right here tucked away now I can take the smartphone clip and mount it inside of the Arca Swiss ball head and since this is a ball head I can loosen it up here and I can go vertical if I want for like portrait video or photos or I can go back to landscape for your traditional 16 by 9 look so these legs open up just like this and then if I press and hold on this button. I can bring it down and to any angle that I want. Then there's like a little tooth right here on the longer or thicker stick. I can pull this out and now I can mount this on a fence. So let me give you an example of how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the legs here, just like that. I'm gonna flip out the little tooth thing. And I have a fence right here. First and foremost, I'm going to attach the little tooth thing to the back of the fence, let it fall forward. So now we have a nice grip that's not going anywhere. Make sure the ball head is all the way up in its upright position. Pull out my iPhone, put this in the clip, and then now I can launch my camera, step away, and record myself, and that is not going anywhere. Let's say I'm filming myself like in a vlogging fashion and I need some extra range, like I need that extra reach. So what I'm gonna do is hold down this small button, swing out the legs after bringing the ball head down swing out the legs like so keep bringing the ball head all the way down that way i can get the full length now i can loosen up the ball head up top slide it out of the cold shoe you have like this little flap right here if you open that up you have like another cold shoe right here so now i'm going to click in the ball head just like this tighten it down now I can loosen up the ball head here, angle it towards me like that, lock it down, and check that out. Now I have a little bit more reach. And if you thought the versatility stops there, you're absolutely wrong because we have an additional cold shoe right here where you can put a shotgun mic, a lavalier wireless mic, a light, or even a professional monitor if you have like a DSLR or mirrorless camera mounted. And you can angle this in any position that you need to in order to point the mic at yourself or if you need to view that monitor. But in the end, 150 bucks for a vlogging style selfie stick tripod is a lot of money. And that's why PGY Tech released the Mantis Pod 2.0 and it has a starting price of 50 bucks. And it includes all the same versatility that you get with this tripod. It just doesn't have the same build quality and it can't support the same amount of weight. So it's more geared towards smartphone use and point and shoot cameras, making it perfect for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. But if you want to go cheaper than cheap and you want something extremely affordable, now you can always go with my little tabletop tripod here and smartphone clip for around 20, 25 bucks. You get that range, you get the base. Y'all know what I mean. 
So we have established that the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max have incredible stabilization. That makes them perfect for POV or first person shots. The issue is how do you mount this in a position where you can get that POV shot? Well, that's where this next accessory comes in. This is the Telesyn necklace mount. So this thing right here retails for around 35 to 40 bucks, depending on if you get it on sale. It's made of like an aluminum material underneath this rubber because it's flexible, but it has a lot of weight. So you can shape it into the position that you want, just like so, and then you place this around your neck. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this button on the back right here to open it up, put it around my neck like so, lock it in just like that, now it's on my chest and I can take my iPhone here and mount it just like that. And I can use this for the front facing camera or the rear facing camera. I mean, I would probably use it with the ultra wide, that way you get the widest perspective, but you can get really cool POV shots like this. Really cool, really interesting, and it just opens up the door for more possibilities when it comes to telling your story. So since this is actually under 40 bucks, I really don't have any cheaper alternatives to this. It just functions great and it does its job and I haven't seen anything else on the market like it. If you guys know of anything, go ahead and comment down below and let me know. That way you can help some other people out, especially if it's cheaper than this. So speaking of car videos and getting like a different perspective whenever you're driving, whether it's for content or for personal use, I recommend picking up a good suction cup. That way you can attach your phone to the exterior of your car or the interior of your car to get Get different perspectives and the suction cup that I recommend is from Falcom and it's 50 bucks so to go along with the Falcom suction cup I recommend picking up the Falcom articulating arm right here both of them utilize the f22 locking system so I can take off the arm here and you can see there's like a little bracket right here this is the f22 mount so I just take the arm push it on and listen that is not going anywhere that is locked on now I can loosen up the arm and place it in any position that I want. Once I get it in the right position, tighten it down and lock it into place. But once you have it all set up, you just take it, go ahead and keep on pushing that button until it's locked and that is not going anywhere. So now I can go ahead and get this in place into whatever angle that I want. So we'll say I want to go this way, kind of record it like this. And then now I can take my phone, mount it, into the smartphone clip like so, and that is locked on. And this is an example of the type of footage that you can get. I actually stuck this onto the ceiling of my Tesla in order to get like an interior shot, and this is what it looks like. Like I said, this is just a great idea and great tool for um, car reviewers, or if you're just trying to get into car content, it's perfect. If you want a good alternative that is probably great for small camera setups and things like that, Ulanzi themselves makes a small suction cup like this that utilizes the NATO rail system, which is more universally accepted. It comes with the suction cup, an articulating arm, and a clip, and it's like 50 bucks. You really can't beat that. So we've gone over several accessories for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. The question is, how do we travel with all these things? Well, that's where the Peter McKinnon sling comes in. This thing is so cool. It's like my favorite sling that I've ever used and it holds quite a bit of stuff. It's an eight liter sling and it's fantastic for content creators. So as you can see, I have the Zhiyun Smooth 5S mounted using straps to the outside of the sling. So I can quickly undo these straps and now I have access to my gimbal just like so. And I'll take you to the inside. Now, one thing I wanna talk about that I really find unique about this sling is you don't always have to unzip it to get to the inside. There's like this elastic little strap that you can just hook just like that. That way, if you're you know going in and out of your bag a lot, you could just use this. As long as, of course, it's not raining. If it starts raining, undo that and then zip it up. But inside you have quite a few pockets down here for essentials like memory cards, batteries, even like a pouch for filters and things like that. You have two more little pouches right here where you can put phones. I have the Mantis Pod Pro in here. Then I have a battery pack from OmniCharge. I have a couple filters here from Freewell and these go with this case right here which is the case that I mentioned earlier in the video. So I went ahead and threw that in there. Then I have the DJI mic here, and then I have the Freewell hand grip. So we have two 
little dividers right here that you can move around and get in positions that you want. It's great for smartphones. It's great for mirrorless cameras, even smaller DSLRs, perfect for point and shoots. This sling is just incredible. We also have like this little area on the back here for putting it on like a suitcase so that way you don't have to wear it all the time. A couple of the alternatives that I found to the Peter McKinnon Nomadic 8 liter sling that are substantially cheaper come from PGY Tech. The first is the PGY Tech One Go 6 liter. It retails for 90 bucks. And the second is the One Go Solo 3 liter, which retails for 66 bucks. It looks really good and very comparable to this sling, and you should be able to fit quite a bit of stuff in it. So if this is out of your budget, those are two great options. So the last accessory that I wanna talk about for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max camera is the Apple Watch. I know it sounds super cliche and some of you guys probably wanna click off on the video, but just hear me out. Watch this. I have my phone mounted to the roof of my car. Now, if I go into my Apple Watch, then go into the camera remote app, I get a live view feed of whatever it is my phone is seeing. And from here, I can start recording. I can snap a photo if I want to. I can stop recording and I can view whatever it was that I just recorded. The cheaper alternative is to look for an older generation. I think like Gen 2, even Gen, I don't know if Gen 1 had it, but I'm pretty sure Gen 2 did have the camera remote feature. So you can get one of those for like anywhere between 50 to 100 bucks, which is really affordable. And if you're only using it for this specific feature, you know, I say go for it. So there you go. That was several accessories for the iPhone 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max's cameras that should help you get the most out of this new camera system. Let me know which ones you plan on picking up down in the comments below. And if you wanna see a follow-up video specific to apps, let me know because I can definitely add that to the mix. I've been experimenting with a few and I found quite a few that um, are sneaking in under the radar that are fantastic. So. Let me know if you wanna see that video. Outside of that, I really hope you, uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you beautiful people in the next one.